So let's start with our color palette. It's really pretty standard to all my other color palettes, however, this one includes Dioxine Purple and Yellow Hansa. So a slight change, but nothing I thought was major. Using a number 10 round gave great swaths of coverage for areas and decent blending, however, did not give the subtle things I would need later to tell me certain anatomy features, such as the bunching of the muscles in the rear flanks or the texture of the shoulder in the stallion. In effect, going at this horse with a number 10 brush was like painting with Bob Ross. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Yeah, f*** you, Bob Ross. This would come back to haunt me horribly when the rework needed to get corrected. Plowing into this painting with a completely remodeled studio gave me a false sense of bravado which caused me to carelessly fill in areas with comical color mixes that were way off the mark from the original material and created a disaster of an underpainting. While this new light and camera rig were a much needed improvement, it was not licensed for lack of paying attention or simple color common sense. The better ranking of the background video was pressure enough to push me into blindly running this underpainting without really doing much else other than balancing the composition. So what happened? I botched the initial work and then talked myself out of finishing it. Something almost all artists can relate to, but I mean, how do you screw up an underpainting? Now usually I start with a clean white gessoed background, but this starry black background threw me and I overcompensated for the contrast. I suddenly felt that the horse in the reference picture was too dark and I decided to brighten it up. Uh, brighten it up would be an understatement and only one of many issues I created for myself. Despite having a reference picture at the ready, I started with bright mixes of Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Hansa, and Raw Sienna mixed with Titanium White and barely darkened any of the lower tones which I needed for contrast and depth. For some reason, my brain figured I wanted a really bright subject to stand against the very interesting and sometimes distracting galaxy that I had painted. However, I was wrong and only succeeded in digging a giant hole for myself. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. There's an awful lot of moisture in here. I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this. No! It is... It is... Wrong! It is wrong! Frustrated, I decided that I had painted plenty of horses and that you guys would all be here for the head and the face anyway, so if at least I got that painted, I would have content for this channel. Not this time. Wanting to move forward into more detail and personality, I switched to a number five round and proceeded to blanket the face with general shapes and mixtures I thought would work. I was wrong. Again. This video shows how the burnt sienna looks like baby food and just smearing, not actually laying at all like it should. I missed some major anatomy features and kept jumping back and forth into the body of this horse, which just added to the issues I was creating for myself. The more layers I added, the brighter the stallion got, but also farther away from the source material. And switching to a cheap and not very responsive number two did not help the painting or my self-confidence. Instead of using raw umber or sienna, or even gessoing the canvas, I chose to blend titanium white into everything, which gives it an opaqueness, however washes out and disproportionately brightens large swaths of this horse, removing all smaller features. Adding large amounts of opaque color, specifically titanium white, also lends itself to creating a very flat painting with little room for movement or imagination. Sadly, feeling a need to post this painting as soon as possible to keep the momentum up from the original posting, I added titanium white to near everything to get a faster base layer. This headset is now set up all wrong and to make it worse, jeez, I just gave this poor animal a chin like something out of the mask. Alrighty then. Now, I really did pick this stallion based on the featured color palette and the many tones which I had already brought into the galaxy painting, which you all seem to love so much. 
One of the issues is that burnt umber and burnt sienna are not opaque colors and therefore need an opaque color to give the horse and the subjects some sense of solidness. More disparagingly, this wrong decision then complicated color mixing because the overly warm shoulder does now not blend into the richer and smaller feature of the head because there's no value or tonal change in the neck. Let's continue our disaster film and start with a mix of, wait for it, titanium white and this time raw umber with burnt sienna. Wow, when that doesn't work, how about y'all go back to that yellow Hansa because it worked out so well for the rest of this poor creature. A couple days go by and I get my head back in the game and seem to get the correct color combinations for the legs, better tonal value, and at least now I'm following the guidelines I've drawn on the canvas. But all too quickly, I realize the temptation to pull those bright coat colors in the legs is way too strong and decide I honestly haven't really analyzed the anatomy enough to make those legs work black against black. Time to put it down and come back in a few weeks fresh. 18 months later. The legs on this original shot look largely black and the hooves being some sort of shade of blue or gray. Getting there involves basically mixing raw sienna and raw umber with the ultramarine blue into black. A few weeks ago I pulled it out, really wanting to finish it before I started a new project. So after laying down a clear matte finish to help fight the glare, I picked apart the legs, the hooves, and the lighting. Using a size zero filbert and a 10-1 round, I went at it with more patience and a better sense of studying my subject. Starting over, I gave the same reference picture a slightly different treatment in Photoshop, this time in order to discern the correct anatomy and lighting, as there's really no clear way in the original to find a more subtle light change that I would need. Focusing on the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna gave me the more purple look my lazy ass thought I could accomplish it by just adding it to my palette. Switching back to the zinc white rather than the titanium white lent itself to the more subtle changes that I needed to retain. I did use titanium white in small doses on the hooves to give them a more solid feel, however it's several layers of color that lend itself to the richer, more realistic appearance. This use of transparent colors in layers is called glazing, and was very popular in Renaissance era paintings. A touch of Mars black here and there sets the shadow apart from the not truly black starry background and help to define a solid source of light and complete the illusion of mass and weight that was needed for this horse. The hardest part once I came back to this is that the camera kept picking up glare from the fresh paint in order to film it. So I had to set the canvas at a 40 degree angle from the lens which meant I also had to paint at an odd angle that I'm used to about 80 degrees to the left of the canvas, otherwise I too only saw glare from light reflecting from wet paint. The new palette, now devoid of dioxine purple, yellow Hansa, now only contained a minute amount of titanium white. The revised techniques required several layers to build color and correct anatomy before achieving the richer, more realistic look I was trying to achieve. A Jedi must have the deepest commitment. Hmm? The most serious mind. This one, a long time have I watched. All his life has he looked away to the future, to the horizon. Never his mind on where he was. Hmm? What he was doing. Slowing down and focusing on my craft rather than the timetable allowed me to focus on what I was doing, not how fast I was doing it. In addition to not having to focus on this channel, slowing down allowed me to go back to enjoying my art, rather than pressuring myself for content. Let's face it, after two years, I doubt anyone would have missed an update on this piece.
painting should make you happy. If it does nothing else, it should make you happy. And if it doesn't make you happy, you're doing the wrong thing. Mostly focusing on what I was doing, not how fast I was doing it, allowed me to better analyze the reference pictures and how my materials were interacting on the canvas. I tried taking a long list of shortcuts and it took me weeks to correct those tragic mistakes. And while the painting is still in the works, my frame of mind regarding it is much healthier and the work looks much better. This is honestly why some artists say that they have to be in the mood to paint. It's not really a mood per se, but it's the ability to block out distractions and focus on what you're doing. In the next episode, I'm gonna try and finish up those rear legs and then start to correct some of the major flaws I created in the body, including missing definition in some major muscle groups. Until then, this is Morning Hawk Creations, signing off from the studio.